The S&P 500, the Nasdaq 100 went on an absolute run today. Spy cues, the works, the stock market was absolutely beautiful. But the main question now is, can we get that continuation that we need? Now, going into tomorrow morning, we have some very big data and news coming out that will directly impact what's happening with the market. And if this data comes out well, I'll give you my overall opinion here, but it will lead us into new local highs, in my opinion. But if it comes out bad, I do believe we'll start dropping pretty quick. So there's a few things that we need to be paying very attentional attention to right just solely on a few key metrics because that will dictate the movement of the market over the next few weeks specifically into the fomc meeting which is in march let's get to work now number one this is the nasdaq so you can see we broke local highs we continued up and today we made a new local high once we made that level you ultimately started pushing back towards the downside you go into es and you look at futures there again very similar it was actually much stronger and pushed back up now this level right here 5029 is also your previous 2021 high yes the previous bull market that we had post covid that is what we're looking at right there so again i can highlight that just so you can see very clearly it's right there right on top of that level and that's kind of where we ended the day at now is that symbolic is it a major level i'm going to get more into that here in a few seconds you go into spy we look at what's happening you're still at local highs you have a little bit of a press down but all in all it's not absolutely terrible again you would argue too that you have support going into like the two hour time frame back down here which would this would be your spy supply level coming into effect so again we have lots of room to the downside with still having a lot of supports this is what happens you break into all-time highs and again we need to understand this is still clearly an uptrend right higher highs and higher lows that's all you need to constitute that uptrend again cues here very similar you can call us a wedge or whatever you want but the fact of the matter is, is we really have no signs of slowing down just yet now I go again into the two hour here you can see very similar type of structure here and what i'd be watching coming back down maybe into 432 so again the levels are very clear there's no need to overcomplicate this now <clears throat> as well as going into this you know the biggest things i'm going to say here yeah nq is important nq is big uh, but again the data that's going to come out in the morning is going to be the most influential and the most key now what's coming out in the morning is going to be cpi data and now the fed has said pc is the most important than cpi than basically ppi now cpi has been in my opinion the biggest indicator overall and we've seen cpi slowly tick down which has been really good right it's basically topped out since last year middle of last year and just continues to come down into right now now the fed has said a few statements they basically said we have enough data on the three month to, to cut rates we have enough data on the six month to cut rates but we need the 12 month data in order to cut those rates confidently and so we don't cut them too early and that's where we're sitting right now so again this would time out very well if data can continue to come in at least until may that would be the 12 month marker which could constitute getting those rate cuts into summer so i still expect may to june to be the rate cut time if everything works out properly so again that's what we have to be focused on and that's why this data is just so key now when we look at the data specifically there's core there's a uh, normal cpi there's you know you can get a little bit confused and get a little bit a little bit lost here so i don't want anyone to get confused so i'll just go over this really quick now i do think core is the most important right here so we want to see core month over month drop and we also want to see the core cpi year over year drop right we came at 3.9 previously so anything under 3.9 would be good now cpi year over year they're expecting a drop down to 2.9 that would be in line with pce data as well that would be very good also so that's the data that's supposed to come out now again you look at this market we look at the daily chart here on the nasdaq and you can see it's been a really nice run we've had a really great press out of this so again i'm going to tell you this if data comes out bad i anticipate an instant test of 17.8 here on nasdaq but more importantly you're probably going to get more downside from that level as well that probably won't be the end of it so i do think there's a lot on the line here now what i will say in the short term i think the bigger effect here will be to the downside what does that mean i'm looking at this from the metric up if data misses the downside will be quick i mean it will be quick it'll be fast sellers will step into the market quick if you come out and you just beat and you come out 3.8 maybe even 3.7 maybe it's really great right you'll get upside but it won't be as extremely volatile why because you've just had such a massive run so i think there's a lot more on the line for bulls here meaning if they don't hold up here if we don't have good uh, a good report from cpi you're gonna fall off and it's gonna fall off quick which is why i continue to press the idea of 
staying liquid during these data pools. There's no reason to get crazy. There's no reason to, you know, open up your risk. There's no reason whatsoever. So again, that's my personal opinion there. So again, as we go into this, I'm extremely liquid. I'm not really in anything. I've looked like a dated Apple, but that's about it. Nothing else I'm looking to get into right now. So understand that before we go any further. Now DXY and a little bit more of this information here. The DXY, we had the inverse head and shoulders. You're basically sitting at that like neckline range right there and we're just chilling. Now you have a little bit of consolidation here. That's a little concerning. If this data comes out bad, I think you shoot up, right? It's gonna happen quick. And you have room back in like 105, 106 on DXY. So again, we go to 30 year yield. What are we looking at here? Now the yield has not broken out yet. Even though the dollar has been pressing up, I haven't been that concerned because yields continue to look positive. You're sitting in that range, right? And when we're sitting in that range, I just don't think there's a reason to freak out, to panic or anything along those lines. So again, as I look at this, I look at this in this range. Again, you have to just wait for CPI to come out. If CPI comes out good, I think yields start to drop as well. And I think that's gonna be very beneficial for the broad market. Now, again, what do we say? What have we been looking at under 4%? I believe the market is a buy, 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 and we'll have a crazy, crazy summer if that does play out. Okay. Now, one thing I didn't cover was the IWM. So I do want to talk about that. You mounted and held above 200 a day. So again, the market still showing me a few things, even though we pulled back on NQ and Dow and ES, the fact that Russell's up all at these highs at 203 and where we're at right now, it points to the, the side of the market's still viewing us very, very bullish, in my opinion, okay? Risk on metrics across the board. We look at Bitcoin, you're at 50K. Risk on metrics across the board. That inverse head and shoulder, congratulations if you caught that. Another great play there as well. So as I look at the market, even despite the selling, buyers are still showing their true hand, in my opinion. So when we look at this market again, it can be kind of tricky, right? And specifically before big data days, I always say, Sit on your hands, don't get crazy, be patient. There's no reason. You have more to lose than you do to gain usually. You're not gonna have a crazy run up before a data reading. It just wouldn't make any sense. Now, when we look at the market, again, I wanna talk about that with the, with the IWM. I've been watching the Russell, I've been talking about it, and I think you have to be paying attention to what the Russell is doing. But when we look at it as well with Bitcoin, the risk on met metrics are 100% still there. So I don't want to say that you look like you're going to just fall off a cliff. Now, I said that with what's happening with the data there. That is concerning because I still agree. If data comes out bad, you're going to drop. It's just going to happen. It's going to happen quick. However, the market still seems to be pricing an effect up to the more continuation of the upside. Inflation to continue on the downside. Also, too, again, I don't like to talk about politics, but when it's an election year, we have to talk about it. The the government is going to want to push inflation down as much as possible. Now, again, I'm not going to go down any conspiracy theories, but I'm giving you my opinion. The Biden administration needs something good to happen. And this is what the, this is the best thing they can do. And if inflation can continue to drop going into the summer, it will spark the housing market right before the election as well. Again, personal opinion, what I'd be looking for. And it still seems like all these things want to play out. So again, worth your 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 time to be paying close attention to all these things that we're talking about now let's get into some equities and what we're looking at there now number one is going to be tesla because it's probably one of my favorite plays now i posted this on twitter and said if you get above 194 you have a lot of room back into 206 well guess what happened and this is why we always say watch the key levels you want the break and the retest we want the break and the retest for the upside move right not just the break now again what happened you got to that level you rejected today and we fell off a cliff and broke those higher low trends Pretty ugly, pretty terrible. Microsoft, we pushed into highs and you came back down to 1415. Now, this is probably one of the most interesting, th interesting things on my chart right now. I'm definitely watching Microsoft above 415 for this BRB here. This was actually incredible. So if data comes out really good tomorrow, you are gonna bounce instantly. This has gotta be one of your top stocks you're watching. Now, if data comes out bad, if you get below like 412, you're dropping quickly into four, uh, 407 roughly. So what I'd be watching here, few things. You clearly are watching this level here. This is massive. So you get below 412, 4125, it's a short, right? So if data comes up bad, definitely looking for that down to 407. AMD, another great play here. This was a scalp that we had today here in Discord. Now, when we watch this, you had the fake breakout. I kind of got stopped out. We got back in. You broke, retest. You had the continuation at like 177.5. Again, if you break and hold 174.6, it's a long. But until then, when you get back below that level, you can't be long. That level is the line in the sand. So when we're in this range, scary, don't love it, not a fan. But again, above 174.7, go long all 
day long. NVIDIA, congratulations, anyone this name. Continue to make higher highs and higher lows. Absolute monster. Again, there's nothing really to chart here. We have to wait till tomorrow and see how the data comes out. Same thing here with SMCI. But again, like I said in Friday's video, a few things you were looking at. I said if you break above highs of 745, you're probably running into 800. Boom, you did. Now, the craziest part is you came back down right into that level, right? You know, again, I'm just sharing what I'm looking at right the perfect touch of previous highs so you had a great entry opportunity off that level potentially now again would have been a day trade but still a hot commodity if you will there keep your eyes on smc i know a lot of you guys are very interested in that name as well meta another great player here you got above the key level 473 you held 479 at 69 at open you shot up almost all the way to 480 great push you got stopped around 4679 and called it a quits and pushed it back down so you can see into the day you started seeing seeing, seeing things sell off but the main thing you're seeing though is there's back at support. They're not that concerning. That's the biggest thing that I'm seeing across the market. They're back at support and if they lose the support, if data comes out bad, then obviously you're gonna fall. But it's not like you're dropping immensely. The market's not pricing in a crazy drop off in my opinion just yet because there's no reason to now apple you're back down to the key level of 187 worth mentioning worth watching now the biggest thing here on apple i'm going to tell you right now uh mark this level right here on your chart 190 you break above 190 you have my attention until then apple it has to go on the slow list the no fly zone no day trade zone right now it's just not doing anything you're stuck in consolidation now i will say on the daily and higher time frames i am very interested the higher lows that are being made the flat top near 200 as well very interested but again short term it's not a day trade you can't trade it you're gonna get screwed in my opinion um those are the biggest things I'm looking at now as well a amazon now this is one of the big trades that we had on friday now you go into amazon what's happening here you shot up to 175 jay had this key level and i think he put it on the watch list you came back down you're almost back down at 171 this will be very big the retest potential of 171 and the balance up definitely watching how we react to that level if we can get continuation as well so definitely something that you need to be keeping at the top of your watch list in my opinion cloud names definitely took a slow down today one name i am watching is baba you saw a little bit of a bounce today i want to see if the chinese market starts to heat up again baba would be a long-term just stock buy for me um so i do want to highlight that as many times as possible super interesting chart i know probably get some flack for this but again it's a stock buy long term forget about it everything else you want to break above 78 to really get the party started and break back into the 200 sma but that's what i'm looking at there i'm not getting crazy being patient especially going into you know cpi the last thing i'm going to mention is going to be here at netflix again Netflix, you have no liquidity if you get below 540. Break 540, probably short it down to like 500 flat. Now, the big thing here is the bull flag in which you're operating in, right? If you can actually break above the key level of 576 locally, I do believe you're going to get the break into over 600, and I would be watching it closely. You're still in a bull flag on higher time frames, but again, the action's just been brutal, and you're not respecting the 562 key level any longer. So that's the concern there. That's what I'm watching. That's what I'm trading. If you have questions, comment down below. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and be be safe for CPI.